Hello, uh, I'm going to be covering how to install c -Line from scratch. This is going to include compiler installing, just getting the IDE set up, getting remote host, a bit of intro to debugging, and some general tips and tricks. So the first thing you want to do is you want to navigate to this web page right here. This is from the c -Line developers, JetBrains. You can just search install c -Line. I'll also have a link in the description. Then you're going to go down here to uh, Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. These are the OS's it works on. I'm going to be focusing on Windows. That's the most uh, popular OS. So um, I'm going to be using Sigmund as a compiler. MinGW used to work, but as you can see, its domain has some issues right at the moment. So I'm going to be using Sigmund. It works about the same. It's just a slightly different process. So first things first, you want to click here. Uh, this is the official Sigmund page. Go down here and install uh, the install the get the exe. So this is the 64-bit one. If your computer is 30-bit, 2-bit, I would click that and download the 32 version. Uh, then what you want to do as that down as that's downloading, you want to come here and that's and click download here for C Lion. This is the that IDE download. It's about half a gig, so it takes a bit to download. Once you got have them both downloaded. Yeah, my desktop is a bit of a mess. But once you have your both downloaded, you should have you can save them wherever you need to. Now, first things first, we are going to install the compiler, and that's going to bring up a message, and then it's going to bring up the screen. So after you've got the screen and C line downloaded, you're going to go here, install from internet. Uh, keep this the same. Keep this the same. Just keep on hitting next, next. Then it's going to get here. Uh, you're going to need to select a download site. Jo I just chose this. This is what's been working for me, so I would recommend you choose this, choose this as well. Then you're going to wait for this to parse through. It's just loading and reading files. From here, you're going to want to click full. And the first thing we're going to install is going to be GCC G plus plus. Now you're going to. There's multiple versions of this. You're going to want to install this one, GNU uh, Compiler Collection C++. And uh, currently the highest version of it is 10.2. So just click the drop down menu and click 10.2. It should be here. It's going to the older version at the moment. Then after you've gotten this, you're going to want to download Make. This is what's going to uh, take care of the compilation process for us. And there's quite a few options here. You're going to go for the one that just says make. Scroll through and the GNU version of make. That's just what the description should read. Uh, 4.3.1 is what I chose. Uh, I believe an older version should work, but try to you get the higher one. Then you're going to search for GDB. And here, you're going to want this one. So I tried 9.2.1. That was giving me little issues. So I just installed uh, an old, one version older, so 8.3. You can try 9.2, but you may just have to reinstall. So I would recommend for now going through 8.3. There's uh, there's not enough differences to make it um, to make you at a disadvantage in 341 at least. Uh, you don't have to worry about these. These will install automatically. Uh, for now, I'm just going to click keep for me because I already have it installed and I just want to keep this version. Then we're going to click next, and for me there's no changes because I've already installed all these. It's going to run through this again. Um, for you, it's going to take quite a while just because it's downloading all the files and it's installing them. So just let it do its thing, um, and it'll be done. I don't want any things in my start, uh, any icons in my start menu. I did click the desktop one originally, that's why that's there. But this is just your preference. So you would click finish then. Now we're going to be installing C line. This is going to be the second part of the video. So for C line, we're just going to again download the uh, installer as we did before from the official website. If you have a, a UMBC account, you should just be able to get a free student account. Uh, it'll Windows will ask you ask you to hey, do you want to install this file? Just click yes. But you're going to click next. Um, I have a separate hard drive that I like to install stuff on, so I'm just going to click D drive. If you just have one hard drive or just want to leave it as default, that's your choice. The only difference I, the only uh, thing I changed was just the drive letter it's saving to. It shouldn't make any difference. I'm going to click next. 
Uh, I choose these just to set up associations. Um, this is again your preference if you want to add it to path or not. Not going to make too much different, too much of a difference. And you would click install. Ah, so it's finally installed. Uh, you're going to want to click run C line. This is going to be the first startup, so it'll ask you to select theme and stuff. It is a fairly large, fairly heavy IDE, so it takes it, it's a bit slow on startup. And then you'll see this screen right here. Uh, this is the usual load screen, and because it's starting it for the first time, it's a little slower than usual. You won't have any of these uh, projects here. It may ask you to select a theme or uh, select a couple of add-ons. Uh, that's again just going to be your preference. It won't make any difference in the long run. But if you click customize, you can select a theme. Uh, I like this one. It's essentially just not the light theme. This one is actually my favorite high contrast, but some people aren't into that. Uh, select font, editor font. This is just uh, again your preference. You don't need any of these IDs for C++ work. We've installed everything we need. But if you're uh, if you do some research yourself and want to install them, feel free. Then for right now, I'm just going to be making a brand new project. The uh, standard for C++ we use here at UMBC is C++14, and you want to click executable, not library. So C++ executable 14, and save it wherever you want. Then you would click create. It's going to load up everything. And then it's saying MinGW not found. This is the first startup, so that's not a bad thing. We're then going to go to where is settings? Settings. From here, we're going to go down to build execution deployment. It's trying to find MinGW. I don't have MinGW installed anymore, so I'm just going to delete that. I do have VS Code installed, but that's not the that's not the compiler that I want to use. So I'm just going to click plus here, click Sigwin, move that up, and uh, it's going to take a second to detect, but it should be able to find find them. So one thing you want to do is, it says not found, so you want to click the drop down menu and click Sigwin GDB. It should say version 8.3.1, detected, 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 check marks across the board, and you should be good. Uh, remember to click apply, and you can click OK, and it should be uh, checking the settings of the background as it needs to compile your work and once that's done cool build file is written so you'll notice it, as it's after it's done working you'll be able to it's, t it's t taking a second for it to load cool finished so after it's done finished you'll have this little check mark right here uh, you don't need a make file for CLIN. It uses CMake list.txt. I'll get into that in a bit. But for right now, let's just focus on the main program. So we're just just going to click run. And it's printing hello world. So everything's functioning as it should. Now I'm just going to again this this part's optional optional. Use STD. I think I should be using using namespace STD. Uh, and then uh, this one, this part's your preference if you'd like to use STD or not. Still, still should work. What I really want to show you is the debugger. So what I'm going to do is this is a fairly simple program. There's not any variables. There's nothing. So I'm just going to add a bunch of variables they don't really have to equal anything it's just that they have to be there and I'm going to just make it this you this isn't good variable naming but for just um, demonstration purposes it's good enough these variables don't really matter uh, but pretend that these are pointers or strings or anything in a big complicated program just something that you may want to take a peek at as you're debugging and I'm going to uh, increment that there and we will have another cout statement right here and we'll just call this hello world 2 
now if we click run hello world one hello world two cool as we expected but let's pretend that for whatever reason there's some sort of error in here and we don't know why this what this variable is or how it's changing so what we're going to do is we're going to click a set a breakpoint right here once we set a breakpoint this line is going to go red and you can click the little bug button here and once you click that what it's going to do is it's going to start using the de debugger and it's going to run the program but it's going to stop the program right there so it's the program is running but it's sort of paused right here this is the in the breakpoint and one of the cool things is see how I made these variables up here these variables are 10 and 100 this is their this is their current values if I had another up statement right here that was that edited these variables there was a brand new variable it would show up here as well there's also memory view GDB this is the um, the actual command line version of it but this should be fine enough then what you can do is click the step into button this is going to put you into the code uh, go down if this was a function it would actually take you inside the function and keep on going now uh, see it's it went to this line but it hasn't ran this line yet it's just hovering over it so now I'm going to click step into again and boom it incremented 11 so you saw it actually changing as the program was going this works for the simplest program or the most complicated one uh, occasionally if you get a seg fault or something the debugger might have some trouble figuring out exactly where it is but it, it should tell you so let's see um, now let's actually try to have a compilation error simplest compilation error would just be forgetting a semicolon so let's run that and it'll let you know hey you forgot a semicolon uh, another error could possibly be uh, if I don't know x equals equals one. Do that, and I forgot another bracket. Now let's run that. It should tell you you forgot a bracket. Um, does that match this one? And it'll tell tell you that you need a bracket beside this one. This is one of the reasons I love C line. It's very visual. It highlights the problem highlights the potential problem as well so I'm just gonna put that there and this is a bit of useless code but it should at least stop causing the error yep stop causing the error uh, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, this cmake.list cmakelist.txt when you make a brand new project this is generated automatically um, and there's only yeah, without getting too advanced into it there's only like for a big project there's only a couple things you may want to do uh, one of them would be just pay attention to this line this add executable if I had uh, another file I would just add it to the list so I'm gonna make a brand new file right here and we're going to call it new source file and we're gonna call it Mm, now you know what let's actually let's call it let's make a header file let's call it test.cpp and we're going to make it an h file at target when you when it says add to target it means it's adding it to test test and boom there so what this part of the add executable is doing is essentially letting CLI know which files you want to debug and which files you're currently using and which files it can ignore. So this is the um, file generated for me. I don't really have to, I didn't have to do anything to add the end if or the, uh, these header guards, it generated automatically. Um, similarly, say I already had this file or let's say I make another new file and this time for whatever, I'm going to pretend I'm importing this file from somewhere else. All right, let's cancel that. New and header. So pretend you downloaded the project and you're bringing the file in from somewhere else. You can name it test two, um, and boom. So it's going to come up with this layer right here. 
that says this file does not belong to any project target. Inside features may not work properly. This means that CLAN can't detect it. This file won't be able to be debugged. It's not on this line. So whenever what you want to do essentially is just add it to this line, and CLAN should start working properly for you. If you don't have this file, if you are just opening up a random project and you don't have this file, you can make one and just copy and paste it in. That usually works for me. That may not be the official way to um, generate tmakelist.txt, but that's usually just what works for me. Only thing you really need to worry about if you're if you just want to get work through your project is this line right here. <clears throat> Any everything else should you can just leave alone. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about remote host. For remote host, we're going to go to tools, then we're going to go to deployment and click browse remote host. I don't have any setup right now, so let's set up one for UMBC. So I'm just going to put UMBC here. You want to go down here and click FSTP, then click OK. It's going to bring this picture up, this up, and configurations. You want to add a brand new one. So let me go through that again. Just going to bring this window up. This should be SFTP. You want to go to dot 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 here. Add a brand new configuration. This is going to be gl.umbc.edu. And then you want to enter in your GL username and your password. You want a test connection and test successful. It automatically looked at the port, it automatically um, determined a couple of other things in the background. Click apply, click OK. Now uh, root path is important, it just can't log on to the slash, the home, the real like uh, lowest directory into the server, That you probably wouldn't be able to access that as a student. So you just want to click open auto detect and it's actually going to log in there for you, then it's going to figure out where your home directory is and just put that in here. Now you can ignore the root URL, that's not really needed. Uh, you don't have to go into advanced and you can just go into, you're just going to click OK. Now what that's doing is that's actually logging in in the background and boom, there's my entire GL directory. Uh, these are, so, let's see if I'll, so these, uh, I can't really show you any of my code files but what I can do is if I just wanted to say, uh, let's go into, I don't know, like practice right here. This should be empty. Practice, then there's nothing in there. So say this is the your GL version of Project Zero or a project folder, whatever folder. What you can do is you can actually take main and boom, drag it directly on there. Now it should be on there. And so it literally just transferred the files over. If I wanted to transfer more file over, more files over, I can just click Control, drag those over, and boom, updated. Um, similarly, if I wanted to, let's go to this point. If I just wanted to multiply by two or something, save the file. Now this file is going to be different. Do that, boom. So uh, this is the remote host uh, wor workflow means that you want to compile your files on GL as well. You can compile them in CLine, but there are some, you can, there can show up compiler differences that can make it so that your code works on CLine, but it doesn't work on GL. Because of that, you always want to compile it in GL whenever you finish a big part. So what you can do here, there's actually a built-in terminal into, um, in C line for you, so I'm just going to SSH for more H1 UMB GL dot UMBC dot edu. You would click this, then the this would pop up, and you would enter your password in like normal. Now, boom, I'm logged into my GL. I can click LL or LS and go into practice. Click on less, and those files are there. Now I'm going to do, I don't want to do Emacs, I'm going to use the cat command. This cat command just uh, shows you what's in, the, it just prints out your file into the console. So cat main.cpp and click enter, and boom, it printed this bit of code out. Now I'm just going to, I don't know, boom, delete that, and do C out hello world. 
hello people and boom so that's a massive change to my file save that it automatically saves but control s should work as well uh, you would just put that into practice boom uh, now it should instantly update so let's run cat main.cpp again and boom this is the new version of the file and this sort of was our old version of the file so it's instantly updating if I wanted to I could uh, g++ I think I click command instead of g++ and then let's do main.cpp and it compiled the file this is the lazy way of compiling I don't have any warnings or anything enabled and if I click ls again here's our default I put it file so dot slash a dot out boom hello people that's there as well this is just an easier way to transfer files over in just one program and a more natural way of working with CLion rather than having to say work on the files here open up some file transfer program and drag it through there you can just open up this remote host I'm gonna minimize this and this will actually save my current um, here minimize this and if I wanted to bring it back I could just do tools deployment and brush mode host boom it's back one more thing so for projects one of the things we look for is good code spacing so let's say that I have a bunch of if statements here and I have um, let's one this is again just lazy programming but I'm and I, for whatever reason I tab that out right there and I do x equal zero put that there with weird spacing um, and then yeah so this isn't gonna give you good points this is just not good code organization there's first of all there's no comments <laughs> you don't really need comments for this basic one but that, that's besides the point but this uh, spacing is an issue. So what you can do is you're going to do Control, uh, uh, Control Alt L, and that's the and that's what what C line did automatically. It went through and it looked at the spacing and compared it to its own default spacing and uh, and uh, fix it for you. So I'm just going to move that over there again. Um, again, put these here. Uh, put that out. Then we can. Um, just weird spacing all around. So let's do int q equals 40 and we'll again put these together and put it all together. We can't put that there. And control alt L, boom, fix it for you, move spacing up. Usually if you're working on a large project I would do this throughout the project or right before you're about to submit because this isn't this doesn't mess with any of the functionality it just changes how the program how the code is spaced out and looks but besides that um, this is as about it you don't really need to know many more things there's always more like tips and tricks more macros built into C line that you can use but if you're just starting out this is essentially all you need uh, one of the things that I really really use often is if you just click 4 and click enter and whoop, four and click enter it should it'll make a for loop for you and there's a couple other macros like that too but if you again if you're just starting out with uh, C++ this is a lot of stuff and it makes programming really easy but you don't want to rely on this too much one of the good reasons of just using a normal GL is it makes you actually understand the syntax a lot more than using an IDE like this. But if you're if you feel experienced enough with GL or if you just are looking for a better way to program in this class, I would highly recommend C line just because it makes the debugging process much easier and it's gonna increase your ability to work on these projects by quite an amount. Um, if there's any questions or anything, please just put them in the comments I'll try my best to answer them if you're if uh, I'm currently a TA for you put them in the tech support chat uh, besides that this is about it
just the basics um, yeah so I hope you this video is helpful and you were able to set up have a C line set up on your computer.